And hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Joe Martin. Really excited to be here. The part of this whole thing that thank you to Dan and the whole team for bringing this information forward for everyone. Uh, but I'm Joe Martin. I'm a copywriting specialist, and I use a lot of that to help tour operators book more corporate groups. But today, today I want to talk about friends. I want to talk about writing the right sentences with ChatGPT. So let's dig right in. If you're not familiar, this is what ChatGPT looks like. You can go online, pull it up, and you can start typing in prompts. And you can type in something like, write a new first sentence for my website. And it's going to spit something out. And then you may go back and say, well, give me some more options. And it's going to give you some more options and give you some really, really clever sounding sentences in some of that. But I want to talk about what happens with those sentences. So if we were to take one of those sentences from ChatGPT and you're going to put it on your website, there's something I really need to make sure you understand first, and it's about the three different types of copywriting. So here we go, three different types. I've got our notes, now's the time. Get that notepad ready. Uh, three different types, narrative, brand, and conversion copywriting. The difference between these, as narrative implies, narrative, all about telling the story. How do I, how do I communicate this? How do I write this blog? How do I write this news article? narrative you'll see a lot it's meant to take them through a journey and we see this on tour websites as well that sometimes we try to get too descriptive and a little too narrative with that copywriting style there's also brand copywriting brand copywriting just wants to be memorable it just wants you to say hey i remember that the kind of copywriting i specialize in is this last one conversion copywriting meaning i am writing copy to get someone to take an action. I want them to do something when they read this copy. And so when we go back to this website example and we see this sentence that says, uh, connect with food and history in unexpected ways, it's a tagline. It's something trying to capture your attention and keep you in. And I want you to be able to see some of that and say, mm, that's brand copywriting. That's, that's if I'm trying to be memorable. But if they're on your website, they're already, they're already here. I don't want to use brand copywriting there. I want to use conversion copywriting. They are here. I need to make them take that action. I, need, I want them to buy that ticket. I want them to contact you to set up their corporate group. Whatever that thing is, I want them to do it. And effective selling isn't just taking a list of all the things that you have available and saying, here, here's our list of options. Just go ahead and choose something from this list. Effective selling is helping them make some of those decisions themselves. And so I want to make sure that we're giving them the tools that they need when they interact with your copy to make those decisions. That's what we're trying to help them do. Make that decision to choose your tour when they're on that page. So something like this, mm, brand copywriting. A lot of the stuff that you're going to see when you try and do some of these outputs from ChatGPT as well brand copywriting. And this makes sense. It makes sense because brand copywriting, oh, this is what's everywhere. This is what's everywhere in the world is brand copywriting. It's what we see on billboards, what we see on the radio, or we hear on the radio, we see on ads on TV. And then it's what most of us default to writing. It's because it's what we're most inundated with. It's what we see everywhere. So when we sit down to, to write something that we think is meant to be marketing copy or influential, we default to a lot of the copy we've seen out and around us. In ChatGPT, these, these models, these AI models are taught, they're, they're like children and they're taught by the stuff that we give them. So right now, I'm sure in the future this will change, but right now, a lot of the stuff that you're gonna see coming back when you're asking it for help with writing marketing copy or writing tour descriptions, it's going to be this type of brand copywriting that it leans into because it's trying to make it more memorable. And it's pulling from inputs that it's already seen online and using that to generate those ideas for you. But this is where, after attending the Travel Trends AI Summit, you're a keen little AI user now. And you know that we don't want brand copywriting as it spits it back to you. We know that you want conversion copywriting. But what does that look like? I want to show you a little bit about how this sentence would change and some of the things that you can do a little bit differently to start writing more in this conversion copy mindset as you use ChatGPT to bounce ideas off of and to help you collaborate on it. So first thing I want to switch on this, uh, 
I, I want to tell them, I want to tell them what it is and why they want to use it. So we change that sentence to have this first part say walking tours. Here's what it is. And then instead of saying unexpected, I'm going to tell you what to expect. I want to tell them, here's what you're actually going to get. I don't want to be hiding stuff. That's not going to help me sell tickets. Telling them you're going to get three hours of food and entertainment. Okay, I get it. Over time, we want to look to refine that second part that to provide you three hours of delicious food and entertainment. Is that really why people are booking? And that's why we want to make sure when your guides are out there giving those tours, they're asking people, hey, why did you book today? Why did you book with us? We want to take those answers and then look to update our copy of those whys. So really important to get up the why are people booking because it plays into the sentence and some of that writing you're going to do so much. And those are things that ChatGPT can't tell us. And there's one more thing I want to point out while we're here, while we're looking at this, and it's actually this button copy as well. Uh, ChatGPT won't be able to really help you with button copy or know what to say, but after this, you're already armed. Let's dig in uh, with that button. I don't want to say hungry, find the right tour for you. What we normally want button text to say is button text should complete the sentence, I want to, and then we have the button text. So if you think about it from a reader who's reading that page, they're putting the words, I want to, before whatever you put on that button. And so I want to, hungry, find the right tour for you, mm, doesn't line up. I want to book now, lines up. But some of the research we've done over the years, we found that that's actually not the highest converting button to put there. And the button that we found that matches people's intent when they get to that page is actually more about, again, decision-making that effective selling component. We're trying to help them make decisions of what they want to do. And so leading with this opening button of compare tours, just this small change of one sentence in this button was a very fast $17,000 increase for this tour. The right words go a really, really long way. And so I want to do a little more now to dive in to how to write the right sentences. So to write the right sentence, first, we need to know who we're talking to. Second, uh, we need to figure out what do they need to know? And then third, why should they care? What is it they're caring about? So first, who are we talking to? There's so many people you can choose. There's so many people that, yes, love, love, love your experience. I want you to pick just one to start. We're going to pick just one person to begin with. And it's special when you do this. And it's nothing new either. This concept of picking one person to build goes back to the early 1900s with one of the men considered the grandfathers of advertising who helped launch a campaign for Pepsodent to bring toothbrushing more to the forefront. And he had this, this idea that we cannot go after thousands of customers until we learn how to win one. And so many times when we work with tour operators, any companies, they don't know how to win one person. They haven't figured out how to go from this person just found out about me, this person took my tour, to this person told 10 friends. What is that? What do those steps look like? And that's why we can focus on one. It makes it easier, way easier to figure out what that looks like. So when we're thinking about who that one target guest is, I've got some criteria for you. More pen taking, note taking time here. Number one, who can we actually acquire? Don't make your one target guest Jonathan Taze or Patrick Kane from the Chicago Blackhawks. Well, Kane's not really there anymore. Well, but either case, who can we pick? Who's actually coming out that you can win? Next, who's going to spend the most with you per visit? Then I want to know who's going to come again. Who's going to help us increase that lifetime value? I want to know who's going to tell other people. I want to know who's going to benefit from the most from what you've created. And then this last one, real important. I want to know who you actually want to host as well. Narrow this down. Get this around one person. And when we do, I compare it to Adele a lot. And that Adele didn't write a love song for a million people. She wrote it for one. But a million people still connect with it. And that's what you can do with, with what you provide, with your experience. Build it around that one person. Really get focused and crystal clear on who that person is. And it's still going to apply to so many other people. And so if you have that person in your mind, if this is who it would be, good job. Next part, 
I need to know what you actually do here. Uh, the power of that first sentence that we had and what made it so high converting was having things split between what you do and then why someone wants it. And this first component of what you do, I need you to get it down to one to three words. Oh, my grandmother needs to be able to understand what it is that you say you do. And this is because the brain is a cognitive miser. It does not want to do any more work than it has to do. We have to make it so simple for it to understand what this is. And so for that sentence, we went with walking tour. This is what it is. This is what you're getting. Don't try and lead with fancy language. Don't try and go with some of those ones that chat GPT and AI is going to give you right away that are flashy. We want to make sure that first we're communicating what this is. Someone needs to understand what it is before they're more open to any other sales arguments you might have. Second part of a really great high converting sentence, the why should I care? To do this, I want you to make a list and write down why that one target guest wants to give you their money. And I want you to come up with three reasons for it. Boom, boom, boom. You can even run this exercise back with some of your team after this whole webinar. Uh, but write, have them write down, why does someone wanna, wanna take our tour? Why does someone wanna give us their money? After they've written down those three answers, then I want you to have them finish that sentence by saying, this person wants to give us this money because of this. Why is it important to them? When you answer this second part of the sentence, and I want you to make sure you're looking for some of this when you generate sentences using AI, it's the difference between features and benefits. When you can talk about why it's important to them, we're talking about the benefit. When you just say stuff like, hey, we've got great stops and we've got awesome food and you're talking about yourself, they don't understand it. We need to take that extra step to talk about why it's important to them. And that's gonna help you have these high converting sentences Make sure we're starting with that what you do and the why should I care. So when you're using AI to generate some of these, tweak it. Go back and say, I don't like that reason. Make sure you start the sentence with what. Plenty of things you can do there. Which is what leads us as we come here to the conclusion, applying some of this conversion copywriting. So the first sentence on your website, always a fantastic spot to look at using some of this conversion copywriting, this what and this why. Uh, page headlines, another great thing. Do they know what it is and why they want to be reading that section or what's included with it? I want you to look at tour descriptions as well. Don't give me fancy narrative-based tour descriptions. Don't try to be memorable like brand copywriting. Use conversion copywriting. Many a times, they just want to know what this tour is and what's included. Don't hide that from them. Bring it right to the forefront. I also want you to look at using some of these concepts inside of email marketing, your subject lines, some of maybe the closing lines in those emails, and then especially on ad copy. Conversion copywriting is not considered enough with SEO and ad copy a lot of the times. Please be careful. We don't want to use brand copywriting when you're putting out ads. We want to use conversion copywriting. I want them to click on that ad. I want them to take an action from that ad to do that we need to use conversion copywriting. As we close out, a few more tips here. Uh, a couple of things for ChatGPT itself. So a couple of my favorites here. Number one, I love it to ask to give me multiple examples. Always be saying, just, hey, give me a few more. Rewrite it this way. I like to tell it to write at a 10th grade reading level. And then I also like to have a conversation with it. Uh, as you write, refine it. When it gives you some of those sentences, say, hey, this sentence is good. This sentence, not so good. And this sentence is terrible because it sounds like AI, because you use too many adjectives and it sounds fake. Make it sound more human. Go back and forth with it. Have that conversation with the AI. It's one of the fun things about it. It's going to help you refine and do what you need to do as you're trying to create some of these sentences. So that is what I have. There is more information if you choose to chase down some of these roads. I put it online at upleveltourism.com slash travel trends. On that page, I got a little video from me. Uh, another way to chase down that one target guest. So I have some more questions for you to define that person. And then with our specialty in corporate bookings, I wanted to give you one of our highest rated blogs, which is our where to find more corporate bookings. So all of that at upleveltourism.com slash travel trends. And I hope this breakdown of brand copywriting and narrative copywriting and that the idea of conversion copywriting helps you create better sentences when you're using some of this AI and don't just fall for their 
for their little little brand copywriting they're going to shove on you there. So thank you so much. Thank you, Travel Trends, for having me. And we're gonna I'm gonna kick you back to everyone else. So thank you, everyone. Take care.